G'day, I'm Nick Abley, the Campaigns Manager at Environment Victoria. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, you might be hearing a lot about climate targets and percentages and carbon budgets. Uh, and the reason for that is that the Andrews government is about to make a decision about what its emissions targets are going to be for 2025 and 2030. The reason for this is that the Climate Change Act here in Victoria requires them to make that decision around climate targets. So the Climate Change Act is a pretty useful piece of legislation. It means we have a net zero target for 2050, uh, but how we get to net zero is really critical. And that's why these interim targets for 2025 and 2030 are really critical. So there's a lot of numbers coming up. There's a lot of details and percentages and carbon budgets. So I'm here to hopefully explain all of that to you. So before deciding on targets, the Climate Change Act also says that the Andrews government has to get independent expert advice about what those climate targets should be. Uh, they appointed a panel headed by Greg Combe, uh, and they did. Uh, they wrote a long report. Here it is. It's uh, it's pretty chunky. It's got lots of graphs, uh, and a lot of those graphs tell us some pretty cool things about what Victoria needs to do to hit particular uh, global outcomes or contribute to global efforts. So let's kick off with what Greg Combe and his panel actually recommended. Uh, they recommended an, a 2025 emissions target or range between 32% and 39%. And by 2030, they recommend targets of 45 to 60%. Uh, here's where we are right now in 2020, which is about 18% below 2005 levels, which they're using as the baseline for all future years. So 60% by 2030 is 60% lower emissions than in 2005. Uh, so a critical test for any climate target is whether it is contributing to global efforts to meet the objective of the Paris Agreement. Uh, so you know, a few years back, the global community came together and said, we are, we're not aiming for two degrees anymore. We've rejected that. That's not good enough. Uh, it's going to be too damaging for the planet. Uh, so the objective of the Paris Agreement is to aim, well, to hold global temperatures below, uh, well below two degrees, in quotes, well below two, uh, as well as pursuing efforts to limit, limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees. Uh, as I said, the global community has agreed to this. The Andrews government has endorsed this. They signed the under two MOU, the Paris Pledge for Action, and they embedded this into the preamble of the Victorian Climate Change Act. So, you know, they've pinned, the, pinned their, their flag to this mast. Uh, now let's see what kind of targets they need to deliver on that commitment. So as I said, a lot of charts in the Combe report, some of them are very, very helpful. Uh, one of the things that the Combe report does is it shows us how his recommended targets compare against different carbon budgets for different global temperature outcomes. So a carbon budget is basically how many greenhouse gases we can put into the atmosphere before exceeding a particular temperature threshold. So this first chart is looking at the, quote, well below two degrees. So if we go through 60% by 2030 as the upper end of the Combe recommendation, uh, we've got a bit of time before we need to get to net zero, uh, according to their analysis. If we go through 45%, we've kind of got to get our skates on pretty quickly to give ourselves a chance of staying in the well below two carbon budget. Um, So they also told us what, they, what we would need to do for a 1.5 degree carbon budget. So uh, 1.5 degrees is still not particularly safe, but it's way better than, than well below two, which is way better than two. So the lower we can keep temperatures, the better, obviously. Uh, so here we see again, if we go through 60% in 2030, we have got five years to get to zero emissions in order to stay within a carbon budget for 1.5 degrees. The real problem is if we hit the low end of the Combe range, 45%, as you can see, we literally need to hit zero overnight in order to give ourselves any chance of staying within a 1.5 degree carbon budget. We're probably not gonna go to zero overnight, which tells you that 45% is just demonstrably not consistent with the objectives of the Paris Agreement. This is, going on a month-long holiday and spending all of your cash in the first week. It's not a very good idea. It's going to really wreck the rest of your holiday. Uh, and if this is the approach we take to climate change, we are really going to wreck the future. So not a great idea. Uh, if you're like Tony Abbott and you think, no, 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 45%, that's crazy. Let's go for 28%. Uh, 
you are not only spending all your cash in the first week of your holiday, but you are also completely maxing out your credit card. So anything below 45% is basically saying, we're not trying to contribute to global efforts to meet the objective of the Paris Agreement. So not very good. Uh, very hopefully, Greg Combe also provides us a chart with what we would need to do in terms of targets if we wanted to be acting consistently with any chance of staying below 1.5 degrees. Uh, those targets would be for 2025, we'd be looking at a target of 43% emissions reductions uh, and a 2030 target would need to be more like 67% emissions cuts. Worth pointing out that the carbon budget for this trajectory only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees. So that is, if we put that amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we'd still only have a 50% chance of the global average temperature staying below 1.5 degrees. So these numbers, 43% by 2025 and 67% by 2030 should be seen as the absolute bare minimum to give ourselves a chance of sticking within a 1.5 degree carbon budget and acting consistently with the objective of the Paris Agreement. So Daniel Andrews knows all this, the Victorian government knows all this, they've had this report for a year now, uh, they've committed to the Paris objective a number of times, and the question is, will, you know, they've talked to the talk on climate change, they've talked about being a climate leader, uh, the question now is whether they will walk the walk and set emissions targets for 2025 and 2030 that are consistent with the objective of the Paris Agreement and aiming to keep warming below 1.5 degrees. Thanks for tuning in, hope that was useful. Have a good one.